the largest and most financially secure aerospace company in the world is called Blue Origin. They have been secretly working on creating one of the most significant rocket engines of the 21st century. The most intricate component of a rocket is its engine, and building a functioning engine is quite challenging. The rocket's life could be abruptly ended by an explosion with just a small mistake. To keep up its presence in low Earth orbit, the United States urgently requires the B-4 engine. So the questions are, can Blue Origin finally deliver this? What's the disappointing truth of the Blue Origin B-4 engine? Why this rocket engine is that much important? How SpaceX can save it? Hey everyone, we're back with another fantastic topic. But before you watch the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell button so you won't miss future updates. I'll stop pretending to comprehend the technical details now rather than diving right into them. We are not exaggerating when we say that this rocket engine is crucial. So let's first discuss why. The future of American rocketry depends on the B-4. The new Glenn rocket from Blue Origin will be powered by the B-4. The first orbital class vehicle produced by the business is also one of the biggest rockets ever created. With a seven meter diameter cargo fairing and the extra benefit of a booster stage that is completely reusable. But as far as anyone can determine, this is not the reason the before is significant. Only Blue Origin's own orbital reef space station deployment and their unfinished Blue Moon lander for the Artemis V lunar mission will be crucial to these particular capabilities of New Glenn. Now, both of those are extremely fantastic. Although they are exciting to watch, they are not immediately important. A new American rocket that can perform medium to heavy lifting tasks for the NASA Space Force and the commercial telecommunications sector has to be put into service right away. Since 2002, the Atlas V from the United Launch Alliance has served as the main launch vehicle for the American space program. In the course of 97 successful missions over 20 years, this rocket delivered significant cargo to the International Space Station in geosynchronous orbit. It placed rovers on Mars and launched probes into orbit around Jupiter, Pluto, and even the Sun. It is simply an incredibly adaptable and dependable rocket. But it had one fatal flaw, the Atlas V's RD-180 engine, which powers the first stage booster, a very powerful kerosene-burning rocket engine with two combustion chambers and two nozzles. It's an amazing feat of Russian engineering, but that's where the issue lies. An American rocket is propelled by a Russian engine. I don't need to explain why that's an issue right now. And the Ala Delta IV Heavy has been working alongside the Atlas V for the past 20 years. This vehicle was made primarily to carry big items into extremely high altitude orbits. Hence, it succeeded where the Atlas V failed, but lacked adaptability in general. Since 2004, Delta IV has only completed 15 missions, the majority of which carried top secret military payloads because the Delta IV sets itself on fire just before launch to burn off extra hydrogen. It has earned a reputation as the most fearsome heavy metal rocket ever. A trio of charred black boosters then emerges from the flames. The Delta IV Heavy has one more launch left until Ula finally retires it, but it still looks amazing. Consolidating the Atlas V and Delta IV into a single rocket has long been the company's intention. It, the Vulcan Centaur can match both of these capabilities because it combines the efficiency an adaptable form factor of the Atlas V with the size and payload capacity of the Delta IV. The twin-chamber Russian RD-180 engine from the Atlas V was replaced with two Blue Origin B-4 engines, which was the most significant change. We now have two of the most significant rockets in the United States that have already been retired. They will both be replaced by a single new rocket design that will be propelled by a Blue Origin engine that is likewise brand new and has never even been tested in flight. A couple of weeks ago, one of the B-4s that was about to be installed in a future Vulcan booster just burst on the Blue Origin test stand, seriously raising questions about Blue's capacity to produce a reliable product. We need to know once more if Blue Origin can deliver on June 30th, since the stakes are fairly high in this one. A B-4 engine was quickly and unexpectedly disassembled at Blue Origin's testing site in West Texas. The engine failed 10 seconds into the test burn, 
the business claims. Although no video has been made available to the public, those who have seen it claim that the explosion was dramatic and severely damaged the testing infrastructure. Now, some explosions will inevitably occur during the testing of a rocket engine. Finding the physical restrictions for this type of hardware is a good idea so that you are clear on what it can and cannot handle. Elon Musk made no qualms about acknowledging that SpaceX has blown up a number of its Raptor engines during testing and will probably continue to do so. Although this is when we start to see Raptors blowing up in mid-flight, just as what happened with the Starship's maiden test flight, things start to become problematic as they move forward with the development of Raptor version 3. Failure on a test stand is to be expected, but failure in a moving object is perilous at best and disastrous at worst. On its approach to becoming flying engine number 3 in the second build of the Vulcan Centaur first stage booster, the Before engine exploded in June. One full Vulcan booster outfitted with two Befores is now awaiting launch and has already received flight certification. What happened to engine number 3 then? Blue Origin shouldn't have been subjecting the product to any kind of experimental stress if it had already been delivered to a client testing to make it fail. You'd imagine that the test and issue was only to make sure the engine was running according to specs before heading out to Ola, but that is not what happened. Therefore, either the B4 has a fundamental problem that affects the architecture's dependability, or this particular engine was the victim of shoddy construction. It wasn't assembled properly. A production line error would be much easier to fix than a flaw in the design that was baked in. But both outcomes are undesirable and we don't yet know the complete story. The major issue for Blue Origin in this situation is that, based on their descriptions of the B4 and its performance characteristics, there is simply no good explanation as to why it failed at regular operating spec. Let's expand on the phrase that Blue Origin frequently uses to describe their engine. The B4 was designed from the beginning to be a medium-performing version of a high-performance architecture to push the boundaries of what is physically possible with a chemical rocket. SpaceX developed the Raptor engine, which uses full-flow stage combustion cycle technology and ultra-high pressure. This engine is a high-performance variant of a high-performance architecture, which explains why SpaceX has gone through so many modifications of the Raptor design and why they are still having difficulties maximizing the power of this engine. While the goal at Blue has been to create an engine with Raptor-like performance, the company has never actually pushed it to the limit that SpaceX is now operating at. So for instance, a SpaceX Raptor 2's combustion chamber pressure is 4,400 PSI, and with the Raptor 3, Blue Origin is now boosting that number up to 5,100 PSI. It makes sense that since the chamber pressure of before is 1940 PSI, it will be considerably simpler to confine and manage. Blue claims that this was a deliberate design decision designed to reduce the risk of development while still meeting performance timeline and reusability requirements, which is all well and good. However, Blue Origin's design theory isn't supported by the fact that the engines blow up during a routine pre-flight certification test. Do we need to compare the B4 and the Raptor so much given that they are two of the first rocket engines that utilize liquefied natural gas, often known as methane, a new type of chemical fuel. Methane is nothing new. It has existed since the beginning of time, but the method of cooling it to a cryogenic temperature to form liquid since the invention of rocket fuel only a few years ago. No one has yet succeeded in launching a rocket into low Earth orbit using a methane-powered engine. While ordinary rocket fuel is essentially kerosene that has been refined, there have been attempts to deal with liquefied natural gas, or LNG. LNG is far more difficult than typical rocket fuel. So in a nutshell, Blue Origin's first orbital rocket engine is a very important piece of hardware, not just for themselves, but for the entire space flight industry. But in true Blue Origin style, the B4 is also a bit problematic and unpredictable which is about as much as you can expect from an aerospace company. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it.